Hi everybody, it's Devin here at Predatory Plants. Doing a hybrid highlight today of this plant here, Nepenthes talangensis by Glandulifera. It's a really nice hybrid produced by Borneo Exotics. They've released quite a lot of it and we've sold a lot on our website. It's a really good beginner plant. It's good in a variety of conditions, windowsills, uh, even outside. I have a friend who grows hers outside in front of her house in Oakland. It's a very pretty plant that is a great example of additive genetics in that it looks pretty much exactly intermediate between its two parents. So let's go look at those. This is Nepenthes talangensis, which is a somewhat finicky highlander um, from Sumatra. It pitches best for us in the summer months, and right now it's doing really well because we're coming off of summer. This is a nice speckled plant that is famous for its deep set peristome. Um, so there's a lot of peristome development, it goes deep into the pitcher and its hybrids tend to get that characteristic, to some degree at least. It also has this nice sort of tapered shape, sort of a wine glass shape, and you certainly see that in the Talangensis by Glandulifera. Over here is Nepenthes glandulifera, a super weird species from Sarawak, from the Hose Mountains. Um, it's got a sort of fat, uh, wide pitcher opening. Uh, this is the clone from Malaysiana, Borneo Exotics, uh, excuse me, from Malaysiana Tropicals. Borneo Exotics also has released Nepenthes glandulifera. Um, besides its uh, sort of pitcher shape and colors, which you can see in the hybrid pretty easily, uh, Nepenthes glandulifera is most famous for its glands, which are these little dark speckles that you see all along the, uh, the midrib, and also the fuzzy hairs. Uh, it's an extremely hirsute species. And actually, if you look up here on the stem, uh, it's extremely fuzzy. The hybrid uh, has some of the glands, uh, though not as many, and it has the hairs, again, but not as many. Um, and on the stem, you don't see nearly that kind of hirsuteness. So uh, it maintains a few of those characteristics, but the main thing it gets from the glandulifera, I think, is that it's just really easy growing. Uh, Nepenthes glandulifera is very pitchery, as you can see. It holds them, uh, it holds a lot at a time. And unlike Nepenthes talangensis, it's pretty forgiving in its growth habit. And so uh, that definitely got passed along to the hybrid, which is partly what makes this such a nice, uh, nice beginner plant. One thing that we're not sure about, because this is a small plant still, or relatively small, is what the vining habit's going to be like. Nepenthes glandulifera doesn't really vine. You can see in the shot of the stem, the internodal distance doesn't really increase dramatically. And so it just sort of like stacks on leaves and gets bushy. Uh, sort of like Nepenthes ventricosa, which has a similar growth habit. On the other hand, Nepenthes talangensis here uh, is extremely viney. You can have a nice compact little rosette, uh, but then the, uh, the internodal distance gets really wide, and uh, you get this kind of scrambling habit, uh, and it kind of grows everywhere. It's good for taking cuttings, but um, it's easier in a greenhouse than in a windowsill, for example. But we'll see how that develops. Uh, we've still got some time to go on this. We actually could afford to pot it up because it's gotten a lot larger in the last few months. Um, but in any case, that's uh, Nepenthes talangensis by glandulifera. Really pretty plant. It's worth adding to your collection if you don't have it yet, especially because, because it's so widely available. It's not very expensive. And um, they grow in very nicely. So uh, hope you enjoyed that hybrid highlight. Uh, let us know if you have any questions in the comments or if you'd like to suggest future hybrid highlights. And uh, generally, you know, like and subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks a lot.